Hi Summit Kids, Miss Heather here. I'm so thankful you're watching Kids Church at home. Well, I want to tell you about something that was very challenging that I did. I ran a Spartan race, which is a very long obstacle course race where we started out by swimming through a pond, kind of a yucky pond too. We had to run up hills, do monkey bars. One of my most challenging courses was having to go under bob wire. And guess what? I almost quit because the bob wire scratched my back and I, it was just so hard, but I didn't. I just kept press on and I won the race. And I was so proud of myself. I got a medal that I will always keep. Well, friends, the Christian life is sometimes compared to as running a race. But guess what? We're running a race for Jesus and we get a wonderful prize at the end. So we're going to find out today what our Christian life is like running a race. But before we do that, let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for the kids watching. And I thank you that you're beginning a good work in their hearts. Lord, I ask that you would continue to do a good work in them and through them. And Lord, open up their hearts and minds to hear your word and your truth. Thank you, Lord, for the kids watching and Jesus that you've sent for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Paul wrote a letter to the church at Philippi. He reminded them that true joy comes only from knowing Jesus. This is what Paul said. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. As you live, watch out for people who do evil things. Watch out for people who try to act religious. We are true believers if we worship by the Spirit, not trusting in ourselves or our abilities. Paul said that if anyone could be confident in his own abilities, it was him. Paul had been born a Jew. He followed the law and had persecuted the church because he thought it was the right thing to do. But now that Paul knew Jesus, the things that were once important to him did not matter at all. Nothing is more important than knowing Jesus. Paul said, I lost everything so I can know Christ and he is worth it. Now that I belong to Jesus, I am made right with God, not because of what I do, but because of what Jesus has done for me. I trust in him by faith. Paul wrote, my goal is to know Jesus and the power of his resurrection. Paul explained that though he knew Jesus, he did not yet know him completely. God brings us into his family and wants us to know Jesus. Paul said, Brothers and sisters, this is what I do. I forget what is in the past and look ahead to the future. I run after the goal of knowing Jesus. This is a heavenly prize. Paul encouraged the Philippians to follow his example. He warned them, not everyone lives for Jesus. Those who focus on earthly things and live as enemies of the cross will be destroyed. But our home is in heaven. We are waiting for Jesus, our Lord, to come from heaven. He will transform us and give us glorious bodies by his great power. Following Jesus is like running a race for a wonderful prize. We remember that Jesus never sinned, but he endured the cross so we can have forgiveness of our sins. We press on to fully know Jesus and share in his victory for eternity. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Andrea from Midland, Texas asks, Sometimes following Jesus feels so hard. What should I do? Andrea, let me just encourage you first of all that yes, following Jesus can be hard at times. Sometimes people make it seem like when we trust in Jesus, everything is easy in life, everything is great. And that's really not the case. The Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible says that we will be challenged quite often and uh, sometimes it will be challenging to find Jesus. But we also know that it's worth it. The Bible's clear about this. There's nothing more important than knowing Jesus and living for him. 
So what do we do in those times, which can be quite often when things are hard? The first thing I would do is say this, be easy on yourself. Um, a lot of times we start putting pressure on ourselves, and we demand more of ourselves and we feel like we're letting Jesus down. Don't go there. Um, just understand that God knows what we're going through. The Bible actually says that Jesus understands perfectly because he lived on earth as a man. And so he knows the frustrations, he knows the difficulties we face. And so he understands and he loves us and he accepts us because we've trusted in him no matter what. So be patient with yourself. Uh, these times when things are difficult, it will end. Uh, things will get easier at some point. Things get good at times. So no, this is just a season that you're going through. So be patient with yourself. The other thing I would say is this, keep after the spiritual disciplines they're called. Keep reading the Bible, keep praying. Even if it's hard to read the Bible and you can only read a verse or two, call that a win. Even if your prayers are simple of, I don't know what to say to you, God, but I love you and I trust you, help me. That's a win. So be realistic with yourself, but keep doing it. And the last thing I would suggest is this, let other people know that you're going through a hard time. God gave us one another for a reason. One of those reasons is to strengthen and encourage us. So when you're going through a hard time, let your parents know, let your Sunday school teacher or Bible study teacher know, let your friends know. Let them know so that they can be there with you, they can pray for you, they can help you, and they can encourage you. So here's a question back for you all. Do you know someone who could use some encouragement? How could you support him or her? For our missions moment, we're gonna learn about a missionary, George Lyle. George Lyle was born in 1750 in Georgia as a slave. In 1773, he became a Christian and was baptized. And in 1775, he was, became the first African-American preacher. In 1782, he went to Jamaica with his friends and family. In 1785, he baptized over 500 new believers and he worked to end slavery. In 1828, he died, but believers carried his work on. In 1832, more than 20,000 believers in Jamaica. Wow. And in 1838, slavery finally ended in Jamaica. Isn't that awesome? He started a good work and God continued a good work. I love that story. So for announcements, we today are going roller skating together from 4.30 I hope you can join us at Royal King today. And for the whole month of July, every single Sunday, we're going to have a food truck after service. So I sure hope you can join us for those. Our time together is over. I hope you have an awesome week, kiddos. Bye.